everybody. My name is Lori. I lead marketing for American Contingency. And today I have with me Tom Rigsby, who is the executive director of AMCON. And we are going to talk about food and water. Hi, Tom. Hey, Lori. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Well, with so much going on here in the world today and, um, you know, supply chain issues and we're hearing, you know, logistics and and uh, with trucking industry and whatnot. And on top of that, throw in, you know, tornadoes and floods and hurricanes and fires and everything else. What happens a lot is that, you know, we have unexpected issues with our supplies, with food, with water and things like that, with power. So today we're going to talk about food and water. And um, I thought maybe we could just bounce around some ideas to help people um, get better prepared, especially people that really haven't thought much about this. And all of a sudden now they're being faced with a power outage and food going bad and whatnot. What are some of the things that you would recommend someone who's just starting uh, try to do? Yeah, sure. For, for someone who, who is like the typical American and they have about three days worth of food in the house, uh, it can be a really scary thing for the power to go out and be out 24 hours and then we start thinking about okay well everything in my fridge is bad now uh, what are we going to eat well, one of the ways to um, kind of I guess kind of mitigate that fear that concern is to have a plan now you you know a lot of times we start talking about being better prepared and, and having some supplies on hand and immediately we jump to this idea of oh, I've got to have this basement with you know hundreds of of shelves and all these cans and all this stuff. Um, I would say the very best place to start is a three day supply. Make sure that you have a three day supply of food that you can uh, eat. That's either ready to eat or that you can, uh, that you can make ready to eat with just water and some heat. Right? So we don't have to bake anything. We don't have to depend on power. It's, you know, if we have to, we can fire up the grill or we can you know, make a little small fire or something, boil some water and we can have food. Once you have that three day supply for every member of your family, then start looking at three weeks. You know, what, what can I build? Um, what, what can I store? Where can I store? Typically is the first problem you have to overcome, but where can I store food so that every member of the family has something to eat for three days. And let me tell you, when you start thinking creatively about that, there are nooks and crannies all over the house where you, where you can put things. Just don't forget where you put them. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, I know myself when I go grocery shopping, I would just, you know, grab a couple of extra cans and a couple of extra bags of pasta just to make sure we have something and, um, you know, dry beans or what have you. Um, mm -hmm. the problem is, you know, we, we like our comfort foods and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, you start watching some different reading books and watching videos and, um, it seems like a little overwhelming, like really complicated, you know, uh, long-term food stores. Like, you know, I, I hear there's things you can do to make it last longer and repackage things and stuff like that. But how, you know, how complicated do we need to get with this? Can, you know, is there a way to keep it simple and keep it economical? Because I think a lot of times now, you know, people are worried about paying the electric bill, not so much about mm -hmm. storing up food that they may or may not need. Well, I think here's the trick and, and maybe we'll see a theme develop as we talk about this, but I'm a big advocate of keeping it simple. Right. And, and I think the easiest way to do that is to, not look at buying things that you're not already using, just buy things that you can use, that you can put into the rotation, right? So here's a kind of a practical example. Um, not that we were preparing intentionally for the, the great uh, toilet paper shortage of the coronavirus, but because we buy, you know, we go to uh, Costco and we buy paper products in, in bales, when everybody else was running out to the store and panicking about being able to find toilet paper, like, okay, we're good. Um, and, and it can be the same way for the foods that you like. You know, you mentioned we like our comfort foods. 
comfort foods are comfort food because they, you know, they have lots of fats and carbs, which is typically what you need uh, when you're in a crisis situation. So if you have, if you store food, you get that three days worth of food, then three weeks worth of food, and you include in, in that stockpile food that you already eat, then you're just rotate. You have additional cans or, or packages in the rotation rather than setting aside all of this over here. And we're never touching that for the next 25 years. Just use, you know, buy more of what you already use. Number one, you, you are far more likely to use it. Number two, it's not as big a financial burden because you don't have to look at all of that money sitting on the shelf over there. Uh, and number three, your family's probably going to eat it because that's what they eat already anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, I've noticed I've, I've gone through um, some things in the house that I, you know, that I can't get in the store anymore. Like I, like a certain mm -hmm. branded tea, I can't find it anymore. I go to the store and there's no heavy cream, no light cream, no half and half sometimes. And so I find myself dipping into my storage quite a lot. Um, you know, I had tea bag stored down there because I don't want to be without that. I had um, powdered heavy cream, you know, because coffee mm -hmm. and um, can't be without coffee. Right. And so, um, and so I'm, I'm saying to myself, well, I'm actually using this stuff. So that's interesting. And then um, I was without well, power. And I, and I think, I, I'm sorry for stepping on you there, but I, I think when you catch yourself doing that, is when you can kind of reassure yourself that what you're doing is working, mm -hmm. right? It's a, a lot of people feel bad about tapping into their preps, but it's, that's what they're there for, you know? And, and we like to, we like to say a lot, we're not necessarily preparing for the zombie apocalypse. We're preparing for next Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? Because you could have tornado, hurricane, just a random power outage, car runs into a telephone pole. But if you have what you need, when you need it, then your preps are working. And I think a lot of people, even when they, even when that's the case, just like you mentioned, you know, you're tapping into some of these things that you've, you've set aside in your preps. That's why you set them aside. And so don't overlook the fact and don't, don't overlook rewarding yourself for having those congratulating yourselves. Like, yes, this is working. This is a victory for me because I have what I need when I need it. And I'm not completely shut down or shut out because the store happens to be out of, of a particular product. Yeah. I, there, there's a, there's a certain mental thing going on in my head. I'm like, I'm dipping into my preps. I think that what you get when you do that though, Lori, is you get, you know, I, I, I've had hundreds and hundreds of conversations like this. And, and one of the things that we talk about, or one of the comments that comes up is what, I don't want to live my life in fear. Well, this is exactly the opposite to me of living my life in fear. I can live my life with great confidence that I have what I need. Mm -hmm. It's not, I look at those shelves and not, uh, I'm not afraid. It, it, it doesn't worry me. It, it calms me and gives me mm -hmm. confidence that, you know, my family's going to be okay. Um, and my, my family and extended family will be okay should something happen where we need those supplies. Yeah. Um, when I was without power once for 10 days in the Northeast, we had an ice storm. The thing that struck me was how much water we needed. It mm -hmm. was, I mean, everything from washing your hands, to repairing food, to washing dishes, to bathing, to, I mean, it was, and it was such a hassle because uh, we had a well and the power was out, so we couldn't get any water from the well. So we had to go to the fire. We had to find something to put the water in, go to the fire department, you know, fill up our right. buckets and jars and whatever else we could find. Uh, but I think that's something that seems to be um, overlooked. Like we take water for granted and, you know, even, you know, I mean, I myself focus on food, but water is more needed even so than food. And uh, we don't always think about that. So we have a couple of dehumidifiers in our basement. And my husband and I go down there and we emptying and there's like probably two and a half to three gallons of water we dump out of those things. And we're just dumping it into the, into the sink. And he says to me, can we, can we treat, can we drink this water? If, you know, if we treat it. And I said, yeah, we'll just put it right in the, in the filter. And yeah, it's perfectly fine to drink. So what, you know, 
what are some other sources of water you can get if your if your well's not working and you aren't prepared? Yeah, I think I think sometimes we have to be uh, creative <laughs> uh, when it comes to being prepared. Um, if your well's not working, well, you got water in the pipes. Um, one source of water that'll and, and again this kind of comes back to what do I need to use this water for, right? I mean. Um, if it's something you're going to drink or cook with, you definitely need to filter it, make sure that it's, it's safe to use. If you're going to use it for washing your hands or washing dishes or whatever, um, you know, you still don't want pond water, but it doesn't have to be as clean per se. Um, but one, one source that a lot of people think about or forget about is, uh, water in the toilet tanks. That's a good source of water. Your water heater is probably full of water. Uh, if you have a, a water heater with a tank, those are two good uh, residential sources of water. Um, and if you have commercial buildings nearby and they approve of you doing so, they have a lot of water in the pipes. Uh, usually, I think the rule of thumb is about 100 to 150 gallons per floor of a building. So, uh -huh. you know, if you've got a five-story building you you got 200 to 300 gallons of water there in the building so um lots of lots of ways to capture water you know rain catchment is uh, a, a very popular way of catching water um i use that we've got a system set up here that we use for all of our uh, all of our animals and for all the garden work everything that we so that rain, that rainwater just goes back into the ground. Um, but we very easily could divert that and you know, run that through the filtration system if we needed to. So, you know, again, I, I think it kind of comes back to your circumstance. Look at your current circumstances, look at what your risks are, and then come up with a plan to mitigate that. Um, you know, if you live in an urban area, it's far more challenging than it is if you live um, like out in the country <laughs> like some of us get to do um, mm -hmm. but in all those cases you can find a way and make sure that you have the water you need yeah speaking of making a plan um, people watching can go to myreadyplan.com uh, to make a plan figure out what their greatest threats are and mm -hmm. um, it'll ask you some questions and then it'll print out a pdf that will give you a plan for how to how to uh, prepare for anything that might happen. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm really happy with the work that we've done so far with my ready plan. I know that there's more that we can do, but you know, it, it again, this is kind of a mindset thing, Lori. You, you have to look at it like this is not a one and done type solution. This is something that I will continuously be working on. Now, and, and just like I said, you know, you, you work on three days and then you work on three weeks and then you go to three months and there's always more that you can do. You should always be working to improve your situation. Um, but a little bit is better than none. That's why I say, you know, a three day supply of food is better than no supply of food. You know, I was, I was in the Texas guard during Katrina and Rita. And there were a lot of people that were coming, whole families that were coming into the Red Cross shelters that brought nothing with them, either because they had lost it or they just didn't know what to bring. Well, the, I mean, the shelters have food, but it's not great food. Mm. They have beds, but they're not great beds. You know, so even if you are in a situation where you need to take advantage of something like that, you can improve your circumstances by bringing just a few simple things with you um, and and have a much more comfortable and a much more filling uh, dinner time when that time of day rolls around. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we covered um, the basics of food and water and you know, give people an idea how to get started. And uh, next time we will focus on there's something else that's very necessary, like comms. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> All right.
Very good. I'm looking All forward right. to it. All right. Thanks, Tom. You bet.